why do I choose a particular type of batting? So I decided that I was going to test what could I get using various types of batting when I quilted a certain way. If I quilted densely, if I quilted very loose, or if I quilted with medium stitching. And I recommend you do a similar test. And I use Quilter's Dream Batting. Quilter's Dream has a huge selection of batting types. They have a low loft, mid loft, and a high loft. So here's an example. I use batik fabric. I use several different types of batting, all from Quilter's Dream. So I use several different battings and I quilted them three different ways. Here's another example of the way I quilted the same fabric, but in different ways, with medium quilting and with heavy quilting. So this is my blog post, and you can get more details about how I did this test. You might wanna run this kind of test for yourself, and you end up with a little book of samples, the sample book that I made, and it has the information that you get from Quilter's Dream, this is a 70 cotton, 30 poly. It's a cotton blend. And then it tells you, and I love Quilter's Dream, the information is just so clear and concise about what you can accomplish with this particular type of batting. It tells you you can stitch up to 12 inches apart and it still remains soft. Why would you wanna quilt something where the stitches are 12 inches apart? Can you think of a scenario where you might wanna do that? It could be that you're making a memory quilt. A memory quilt where you've taken photos, you put them on fabric, but you don't wanna stitch over the face. So you wanna be able to get a batting where you don't have to stitch over the face and that means you can do a stitch that creates a frame around each photo. Yeah, that big X over someone's face would not be good, exactly. So you wanna learn about batting so that you can get the batting that suits your project. That's one example. I created three different types of quilting, this very loose quilting, then medium quilting, and then some very heavy quilting on the same batting. Why else would you want to learn about batting? It could be that someone you know is allergic to synthetic fibers that you're making a quilt for, or they're allergic to natural fibers. Then there are some instances where you wanna use a batting that has the ability to be fused and you can stitch up to eight inches. Instead of 10 inches, it's eight inches. No more than eight inches apart. The other thing you wanna consider, how much the batting will shrink after washing. In my examples, they were all washed so that I could see how much they shrank and what they looked like after. Look at the Dream Puff. It says you can stitch up to 10 inches apart. So, so far we've seen three different battings. One where you can stitch 12 inches apart, 10 inches apart, eight inches apart, but they all give a different result. And some are natural fibers, some are synthetic, and some are blends, cotton blends, but the shrinkage also will be different. If you don't want a lot of sh shrinkage, meaning that it doesn't start to draw in after it's washed and dried, then you would find the batting that works best for that. Look at the texture and the softness that this Dream Puff has. You can just see that and feel it. It's very different from, let's see. This is a cotton batting. Okay, look at the flatness of the cotton. Now look at the Dream Puff. What a difference, what a difference. 
And even though it has this heavier quilting, it's still very soft, very soft and appealing. What is your favorite batting? Have you tried other types of batting? What a difference batting can make in the look of your project. See how flat this cotton batting looks? And this is something that you may want. You may not want it to be puffy. You may want a nice flat look compared to say this one. Look at the dimension. Quilter's Dream I think has been one of the most reasonably priced battings that I've come across. The Quilter's Dream website, there's poly, there's poly cotton blend, and then they also have different lofts. And guess what? Did you see this? Request a sample to try their batting. Have you ever asked for a sample? So I like my little sample book. And on my blog post, I show you how I did these rings and put in these little holes here so that I can make this. That means that I can add a new one whenever I whenever I need to. When I make more samples, I just add the extra samples. And then each one has a regular um, loose leaf sleeve with the Quilter's Dream information for that particular batting. Okay, but the, in this blog post, I recommend you go take a look at it because it gives you all the details of how I ran this test.